yo what's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel getting to you late in the week with another episode of let's talk about it but a lot going on this week especially with the Bengals in the nfl in general obviously Bengals huge win over the ravens last week joe burrow casually walks in puts up 525 sets the franchise record bart scott and them hate it a lot of people love it Bengals got the Chiefs this week, AFC North on the line, huge game, Burrow versus Mahomes, let's talk about it. So, what a game it was last week, if you're a Bengals fan at least. I actually was able to go to Cincinnati and go to the game, my first time in Paul Brown Stadium in about five years now, so that was great. I mean, I don't think I could have picked a better game to go to. Obviously, Joe Burrow in the offense was just absolutely unstoppable. I mean, it looked, it felt like I was watching LSU, Joe. It was, it was great to watch. It was almost reminding me of the LSU-Oklahoma playoff game back in 2019. Just just with so much ease, he was picking apart the Ravens' defense. I mean, it was, it was crazy to watch. T. Higgins, 12 receptions, 194 yards, two touchdowns. Shamar Chase, seven receptions, 125 yards. Tyler Boyd, I think he had three receptions, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Just a great, just spectacular performance by the offense, led by Joe Burrow, putting them in full control of the AFC North and allowing them to now clinch the division with the win against the Chiefs this Sunday. Now, obviously, beating the Chiefs in any situation is a tall task. The Chiefs pretty much have their division wrapped up. I'm not sure if it's completely wrapped up yet or not, but they're playing for the number one seed. Bengals are playing for the division. It's going to be a tough matchup. The Bengals, luckily on defense, they do have Logan Wilson coming back, which is huge, especially, I mean, obviously Logan Wilson is a great player, but especially now that Jermaine Pratt will miss the game as he's been placed on the COVID reserve list. Stopping Travis Kelsey for anybody is going to be a tall task, but for a guy just coming back from injury and having one of the linebackers out, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Bengals. They're not, I mean, they're not going to stop him. You just have to try to slow him down just a little bit to give your offense a chance. But the Bengals are going to need to score if they're going to want to stay in this game because the Chiefs are going to put up points. And I heard somebody talking about, I forget what show I was listening to, but against the Chiefs, you have to just make it, make them beat you slowly and not let them hit you over the top to guys like Tyreek Hill, Miko Hartman, Travis Kelsey. I mean, they just have so much speed and so many playmakers on the field. It's just about keeping things in front of you and not letting them get big plays. The Chiefs may be without the starting running back, though. Clyde edwards helaire did suffer an injury in the game against the Steelers last week and is questionable for this Sunday. So that could affect what they do on offense, take away a little bit of that balance that makes them as good as they are. So we'll have to wait closer to game time to see if he is actually going to play. But um, either way, this offense is very difficult to stop and it's going to be a tall task for this Bengals defense. But I think they can do it. The Bengals defense has been largely very impressive this season. Um, Von Bell had another really good game last week, and the secondary has really been a surprise. I mean, I knew a lot of these guys were pretty good, but especially Eli Apple. I mean, Eli Apple has played really well, especially in the second half of the season. Chidobe Awuzie has been really good. Mike Hilton's been really good. Von Bell, like I said earlier, has been really good. Surprisingly, the one who's probably had the quietest season is the guy we thought we were going to have the biggest impact, and that was Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates is still a great player, but doesn't quite had the kind of season that many expected him to, but I still feel like even though it's late in the season, it's just a matter of time for him. He's going to come out and have a huge game and really just take over on the defensive side. And then also in the pass rush, that's going to be huge to get to Mahomes. The Chiefs have a very good offensive line this year, but Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard, BJ Hill, Larry Ogunjobi have been very good all season long. And I expect them still, even though against a good Chiefs team, a good Chiefs offensive line, they'll be able to get some pressure on Mahomes and make it difficult for him to just be in the pocket and dealing all game long. So playing good defense is the first step for the Bengals, but obviously when you play against the Chiefs, you have to be able to score. The Chiefs early in the year, their defense was really bad. I mean, to put it to put it bluntly, but on this eight game win streak they've been on, the defense has played a whole lot better. So it's going to be big. Obviously, Tyra Matthew, one of the best safeties in the league, you know, it's been very good. He's just you just kind of have to game plan away from him. You, he, like he covers so much ground and is so good at making plays and forcing turnovers. You have to just try to stay away from him as much as possible. So it's going to be interesting to see what Zach Taylor, Brian Callahan, the Bengals do to scheme around that. But I still think the Bengals have one of the best 
wide receiver groups and just skill position core in all of the NFL. I mean, having Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd at your disposal, I think you have a chance to attack and really take advantage of just about any defense. So I don't think the Bengals offense will have too much trouble. I think they're more than capable of attacking this Chiefs secondary which has been improved throughout the season, but I still think that there are plenty of holes in that secondary for the Bengals to attack. But it's going to be a huge game. I expect a great atmosphere at Paul Brown Stadium this weekend. They're trying to sell it out. I would love to see them finally get a sell out at Paul Brown Stadium. I want to say they haven't had one in at least a, a few years now, but obviously hype around the team is at an all-time high. So I think it'll be a great atmosphere. It's supposed to be cold though. It'll be interesting to see how that affects the game. It's supposed to be in the, um, I want to say upper 20s, low 30s for this game. It was actually great weather, surprisingly enough, for a December game in Cincinnati. The game last week was great weather. It was like low 50s. The weather didn't really have any impact on the game at all. But it's going to be cold, possibly windy. So that could make the game slower on offense. You might be seeing both teams run the ball a lot more to start the game. And if that's the case, that could be advantage Bengals, in my opinion, because the Chiefs, if even if Clyde Edwards-Hilaire plays, he's probably not going to be 100%. So the Bengals with Joe Mixon, I think, would have an advantage in that department if the conditions make it more difficult to throw the ball. Looking around the rest of the NFL and the AFC North, though, this week, the AFC North, looking at that first, um, Browns and Steelers is the big game. Both teams just kind of fighting for a chance to stay in it, really. Ben Roethlisberger has pretty much said, though, that this is going to be his last game at Heinz Field, so it'll be an end end of an era in Pittsburgh. So that's going to be an interesting game to watch on Monday night. The Ravens, the Ravens are still in it, but man, I almost feel bad for the Ravens. I don't because I'm a Bengals fan and I don't really like the Ravens, especially after the two games they played this season. But man, talk about a team that just been decimated all season. It's really impressive that they are still eight and seven and right have a chance to make the playoffs after Lamar Jackson's missed time. They had so many guys get hurt before the season. They had their backup quarterback get hurt right before a huge AFC North matchup last week. It looks like I saw Lamar practice the other day, but he's just still far from being 100%. I'm not sure what Tyler Huntley's status is for this week. I would assume, since the quarantine time has been shortened to five days, I would assume that he would play. But man, I mean, the Ravens, it's. It's not going to get any easier for them getting down into um, the last couple of games this season. But the NFL playoff race this year is just one of the wildest races I've ever seen. I mean, it's still like more, almost 75% of the league still had the chance to make the playoffs with just two games left, which is just crazy, crazy to me. But it's going to be a wild you know, race to the finish. I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. Excited to see if the Bengals can lock it up this weekend. Oh, and real quick too, for the Bengals and all the Cincinnati viewers, this video should be coming out right before the big Cincinnati versus Alabama playoff matchup. So to everybody, go Cats. You know, not exactly, not a, I'm not a UC fan, but I do, I do love some UC and I definitely don't like Alabama. So I'll be rooting for them in that game. So I'm just a huge, great time for Cincinnati right now. Huge week. You know, rooting for both the Bearcats and the Bengals this upcoming weekend. And yeah, that's about it for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back next week, hopefully with an earlier upload. I meant to get this out earlier in the week, but things have happened. You know, been busy. But yeah, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, Godspeed.